Hello and welcome to our first live event. Um, we are doing a webinar today on osteoarthritis of the knee. We would thought we would capitalise on the um, advancements of the digital world ever since um, COVID um, and how everyone's more embracing on accessing things more digitally. Um, I know some of you are struggling out there to access some healthcare or maybe things have come up and you're not sure where to go. So hopefully this will give you a little bit more guidance as to what to do, where to go and um, more signposting. Um, if I can just make you aware of the question and answer function that is hopefully is on your screens. If you can post away your questions and we will go through the questions at the end, there is an option to give each question a thumbs up. And please do that if you are keen for us to answer that question at the end. And we will go through the questions depending on the order of which um, the number of thumbs up each one gets. All right. So anyway, without further ado, I will hand you over to Kira Marks, who is our lower limb clinical specialist, and he will take you through um, the world of osteoarthritis of the knee and what you can do to help yourself. Over to you, Kieran. You should be coming. Thank you very much, Claire, um, and thank you everyone for attending and taking time out of your afternoon to listen to this sort of self-help digital webinar on osteoarthritis of the knee. Um, now, the aims of today's webinar is to talk a little bit more about what is osteoarthritis, um, what can cause osteoarthritis and the risk factors associated with that, and then also the symptoms and management and hopefully from today's presentation you'll be able to take a lot more tips about what you can do to try and help yourself. Now before we get started I wanted to talk a little bit more around the misconceptions of osteoarthritis and the things that you can see on our screen now are, are things that I hear about from patients and, and from service users all of the time um, about osteoarthritis itself. Now many of the things that you see on the screen are, are beliefs which have been informed through society whether that's come from the media, through Google, through the internet, and sometimes even things which we hear people talk about osteoarthritis of the knee who work in healthcare, and also potentially the people who are around us who are experiencing or living with osteoarthritis. Um, and what I wanted to do is talk a little bit more about those first. Um, so the first one commonly which I wanted to discuss was wear and tear of the knee. OK, now this is an overused and an inaccurate description of, of what is occurring inside the knee. Now, um, what is happening inside the knee is that, yes, um, the process at which occurs is that extra bone is being laid down inside the knee um, in order to try and stabilise the knee. Now, what we should be viewing the knee in, in more of a positive manner is what we call wear and repair. And we're going to go on to talk a little bit more around that in a minute. OK. Um, because this new process of bone being laid down inside the knee is the knee trying to repair itself and stabilise itself. OK, exercise is harmful for my joints. This is something I hear about all the time um, in the clinic. And I can understand when we if we experience pain when we exercise, that it can be understandable to think that we're causing more harm and, and more damage to the joints. But I want to if there's one thing that you take away from today's presentation is I want to reassure you that exercise is vital and key for the management of osteoarthritis um, and you're definitely not causing further harm or further damage but today hopefully we'll be able to show you a few more tips um, in terms of what you can be doing to try and exercise a little bit more and become a little bit more active. Surgery is the long-term best solution. Now surgery, surgery does have a role okay but should always be viewed as the last resort OK, and it's very important that you've explored all of your other options. And there are many of them out there which you might not know about before considering that as an option, um, because it certainly does come with it risks. Um, and finally, um, osteoarthritis is the inevitable consequence of ageing. All right. Um, now, again, this is something I hear about all of the time. Um, and in, in a lot of instances, this belief comes from x-rays and and a lot of us have been diagnosed with osteoarthritis following an x-ray. But osteoarthritis is becomes more common as we get older naturally and increases the likelihood of developing osteoarthritis. But that doesn't always necessarily mean we're going to develop pain with the condition. Okay. Now, it's important that we look at changing the mindset, OK, and, and trying to view what we see on the Internet, not always as the gold standard. All right. Now, rather than viewing the knee 
in a wear and tear perspective, we should be viewing it more as wear and repair. What can we do to try and get the knee um, functioning better? How can we get it stronger? How can we reduce the pain associated with the osteoarthritis? Now, I like the term age related changes. OK, I think it's less fearful. Um, and I think it's something that you're going to hear me talk a little bit more about um, through the presentation um, rather than potentially referring this to osteoarthritis of the knee. Now, and other ways that we should be viewing exercise is motion is lotion and bend to mend. OK, think about exercise in a positive manner. And these are the things exactly which we should be looking to do when we're when we're active and when we're exercising. Now, this small table, I'm not going to go into a great amount of detail, but there was a study which looked at the percentage of adults over the age of 40 without any knee pain at all. Um, and they had an MRI scan of their knee. Um, and it was found that 43 percent of those people without any pain had issues with their cartilage. 19 percent of them had, um, again, meniscal tears and again, further issues with the cartilage. 37 percent had osteophytes, which is an underlying sign of osteoarthritis. This is um, this is extra bone being laid down within the joint, which might be commonly be expressed through your doctor or things which you might see on a report or on an X-ray. So overall, 19 to 43 percent of these people without any knee pain um, had osteoarthritis in their knee. So this just shows that it's not all doom and gloom if you've uh, if you've had a scan or if you've had an X-ray. Um, Now, what is osteoarthritis? Um, so our, it's the most common form of arthritis. Many of you might be familiar with rheumatoid arthritis and, and a lot of the education and advice will be, which will be being provided today will have some overlap with rheumatoid, but our main concentration is with osteoarthritis of the knee. Um, we're talking about the knee today because the knee is the most commonly affected joint, um, slow, slowly followed up by the hip. Um, and again, if any of you here today have osteoarthritis of the hip, then I'm hoping that you'll be able to take away some valuable information from that as well. Um, now, what is happening inside the knee? So it's actually osteoarthritis is the body's process to try and repair and, um, and replenish the knee. OK, and this results in changes in the shape and structure to the joint, which you might see when you particularly when you look at the knee, it might look different to compare to the other side. Um, and the processes which are occurring are trying to um, uh, attempt to stabilise the joint and make it more stable. Um, but what we should be doing ourselves is trying to think about what other approaches and what more active approaches can we take to try and improve the stability of our knees. Now, what can cause osteoarthritis? Now, we've talked briefly about age and um, as we gradually get older, um, the likelihood of developing osteoarthritis increases. However, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to experience pain. Um, it's quite common um, that when we have an X-ray of the knee that there are going to be signs of osteoarthritis. And as I said before, it's not all doom and gloom if you do, if that is something which is expressed to you for following an X-ray. Um, gender, we know that females are more prone to developing osteoarthritis than males, and we think that's related to bone health rather than anything. But um, again, the way that we would manage it should be no different. Um, genetics, an important thing to consider um, is there's been a family history of, um, of knee replacements or of hip replacements in the family. Um, and this may be suggestive that may increase your risk of developing osteoarthritis in the future. Um, however, the way that we approach it and the way we should manage it um, would be no different. Um, previous injury, so if you've had a previous injury to the knee in the past or uh, any significant surgery, um, then this can increase our risk of developing these age related changes inside the knee. Um, weight, if we are overweight and um, that places greater strain and greater pressure through the knee and we're going to go on to talk a little bit more about the role of weight loss as we move forward through this presentation today. Um, and finally, being sedentary, the more we sit, um, the more problematic that will be. Sitting is now being defined as the new smoking. Um, and what we should be trying to do is we should generally be trying to move more. 
the le the more we sit, the less we do. OK, the more muscle, the more our muscles become weaker um, and therefore that's going to result in more strain and more pressure going through your joint when you're trying to exercise and when you're trying to move. So beginning to move more is vital. Sitting more than nine and a half hours in a day um, has been shown to increase the risk of death. Um, and therefore that shows the importance of moving and um, particularly in these times where things are moving more virtually and more digitally. Um, so typical symptoms of osteoarthritis of the knee. Um, now, many of you may have these and um, and I think it's important that we revise these because a lot of some of you attending here today might have solely been diagnosed with osteoarthritis following an X-ray. And as we've discussed, osteoarthritis on an X-ray is very common. So therefore, it's very important that um, we match the symptoms that you're experiencing with the diagnosis of osteoarthritis so you get the right management and the right advice. So typical symptoms that we hear about um, and you may experience are pain and tenderness in your knee. So when you're feeling around your knee, you might feel points of tenderness, um, particularly maybe on the inside or the outside of the knee. Um, swelling around the knee can be quite common um, and can be signs of infl and some inflammation inside the knee. Stiffness and problems moving the knee, especially after a period of rest. So first thing in the morning, you might find you're a little bit stiff and a little bit painful when getting out of bed, but also even getting in and out of a chair after a period of sitting um, and the knee feels a little bit grumbly after that. That can be something which, again, can be a sign of some early osteoarthritis in the knee. Pain which tends to get worse with activities such as walking or stairs. Um, now, those aren't the, just those activities. It's not just those activities which can reproduce pain with osteoarthritis of the knee. Um, but normally it is activities that involve putting weight and pressure and load through the knee. Um, and another typical symptom which you might hear about and you might experience yourself is is creaking or noise from the joint. All right. Um, and that may be a sign of some underlying osteoarthritis in the knee, but it's not to say that um, the pain can't improve uh, in relation to this. So what happens inside the knee? Um, so as you can see from the picture on your right hand side, um, what tends to happen is the cartilage at the end of the bones becomes a little bit rougher over time um, and the joint slowly begins to repair itself by laying bone down at the edge of the edges of the joint. Um, and we typically call these bone spurs or osteophytes. Um, and as I said to you before, these are signs of the knee trying to repair itself because it's not being stabilised by the other structures which should be doing its job. Um, and as a result of that, when we begin to develop pain um, uh, around the knee, we begin to use the knee differently. In some instances, that might be because it's painful. That might be because we're, we're concerned about causing further harm or further damage. Um, and therefore, the muscles become weaker. OK, we might begin to experience some giving way of the knee. The knee generally might not feel as strong during activities like getting in and out of the chair or going up and down stairs. Um, and the joints and ligaments inside the knee begin to contract and become a little bit stiff. Um, and this is what result, results in this process of, of swelling and pain and reduced movement in the knee. Um, so what can you do to help? Um, for me, it's all about developing healthy habits um, and a lot of these things some of you may have explored already, um, but hopefully we're going to talk a little bit more about them in a little bit more detail to to see if there's anything else that we can try and do um, in order to help you guys manage your pain a little bit better. Um, so exercise, exercise is a vital component to what we're going to talk about today and, and, and I want to view exercise potentially Rather than viewing it as exercise, we look at it more as activity, OK, because sometimes exercise is viewed that you have to go to the gym and um, you have to play sport or um, but that's definitely not the case. Um, we all live very busy lives and um, and it might be about how can we squeeze small bits of activity into our day um, in correspondence to the pain. All right. Um, and how about how we listen to our bodies? Um, pacing and pacing um, and modifying activity. So how can we do things differently? Uh, healthy eating and weight loss. Um, we know we should know how important that is and we are going to talk a little bit more about that. 
walking aids and how they can help thinking positively about the condition and also the value of pain medication and dietary supplements. So activity or exercise, okay? I think we can call it either one, but I think we should be look. the general consensus is that we should be trying to move more, okay? Um, and what the evidence and what we what we know and what we should be doing is that there's strong evidence for both cardiovascular exercise and muscle strengthening exercises. Okay, and cardiovascular exercise doesn't just have to be walking. Okay, it doesn't just have to be cycling. We can look at other ways that we can stress our system um, and improve our fitness a little bit further. So on, on the webinar today, I'm sure there's people who have got different levels of, uh, of activity that they are able to do, but starting slowly and a slow and steady approach is what I would advise. Um, so cardiovascular exercise can include walking, can include cycling, um, it may involve swimming um, other things like aqua aerobics are really beneficial and take the weight and take the load off the knee. Um, but also other things, it, I always like to think about things that you might have done in the past and, and which you might not feel as if you're able to do now. And, and what ways can you try and incorporate them back in? And, um, and for those who may have enjoyed football, thinking about potentially walking football as a consideration to, um, of trying to get back into activity that you enjoy and you're motivated to do. Um, that's the biggest thing. If, if you can find something that you're motivated to do and you enjoy, the, the more likelihood is, is you're likely to do it more often. Um, another key component of this is muscle strengthening exercises. So as we talked about before, um, as the knee's trying to repair itself, what can tend to happen is, is, is the muscles become a little bit lazy uh, and the muscles become weak. So a couple of times a week, it's recommended that we do some form of directed exercise to the muscles around the knee. Um, and that doesn't have to include going to the gym. That can include a home exercise program that you might have been given via a physio. Um, or other exercises such as in a class environment, um, which also you also might find quite beneficial. Um, 30 minutes of exercise five times a week is what's recommended. OK, and then this this infographic I want to talk through in a little bit more detail because I think this is this just highlights the importance of exercise and the importance of, of, of physical activity in general um, and what we should be aiming for now. What we do know and what we know about physical activity is that it can improve with sleep, it can maintain a healthy lifestyle and help you maintain a healthy weight. OK. Um, and it can help manage stress and improve your quality of life. Um, all of these things which have a, a quite a significant effect on our pain levels. And if we exercise and we and we exercise according to recommendations, then this can increase or decrease our risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Um, heart disease and can reduce our risk of falls, um, but also reduce our risk of developing cancers such as breast cancer and colon cancer. Um, so viewing exercise, not just and viewing physical activity, not just to help with osteoarthritis of the knee and not just to help with pain in our joints, but how else can it uh, have a positive impact on the rest of our body? Um, and it's about e making every minute count. So. The recommend, general recommendations are is that we should be trying to exercise 150 minutes per day of moderate intensity exercise or 75 minutes of, of vigorous intensity exercise. Now, I know that's not achievable for most people, OK, but I'm hoping from today that you're going to be able to find strategies that you can begin to do to just start by doing a little bit more. Um, so it might be typical examples might be thinking about getting out in the garden a few more times in the week or rather than taking the bus into town, can I can I walk a little bit of the distance and, and walk and then catch the bus from a different bus stop? All right. Or rather than if, I, if I'm taking the car to work, is there a car park that I'm, I can leave my car in and then walking some of the distance to work? Um, all of these little things that we have to try and do on top of our normal daily activity. Um, as well, as well as what you can see there is is the importance of building strength. So they say on at least two of those days a week, we should be trying to um, improve our muscle strength of our of our whole body, not just of our around our legs. And that might be through carrying heavy shopping. That might be through yoga. It might be through the gym 
or it might be through attending exercise classes. Now, I understand with exercise the recommendations are for moderate exercise, but I also understand that we all have to start somewhere. Um, and it might be that we start off with light exercise, then progressing through to moderate and through to vigorous. So examples of light exercise might be cleaning, um, it might be carrying shopping and um, or it might be yoga. All right. But what the aims of exercise and what exercise should be doing at, is increasing your heart rate, feeling like you're out of breath. So when you're going for a walk, if you're taking your dog out for a walk, which is a typical example, um, you should be thinking about, OK, am I able to maintain a pace that I, I am if I'm needing to maintain a conversation? Do I feel slightly out of breath? And when I get back from that walk, do I feel as if I've actually physically exerted myself and consumed some energy doing that? Because um, you should be challenging yourself whilst listening to your body and listening to your knee. So examples of moderate exercise are, are walking, but thinking about the pace of that walk, cycling um, and shopping. Some of I'm sure we love to go out and shop at the weekend. So carrying shopping around the supermarket, carrying shopping around the shopping centre is another valuable way of strengthening our muscles and doing some exercise out of the norm. Um, Progressing more to vigorous activity, which might be playing sports or or dancing or swimming. Um, and all of these things can can help in different ways. Now, these are quite simple exercises that um, can be beneficial to start you off doing something. OK, and these exercises involve strengthening the muscles around the knee. Um, and I want to refer you to um, the Versus Arthritis UK website. OK, if you were to type that into Google um, and type into if uh, the osteoarthritis of the knee information booklet. Um, and this is something that there's a lot of inf valuable information and these exercises are uh, what you'll be able to find in there. If you don't have access to the Internet, then um, it was always something that you can um, email me and I can always forward, the book, forward you the booklet via PDF. Now, progressions on from those exercises, which uh, may be of benefit and be, may be of a little bit more value because these are the things that we tend to do on a little bit more daily basis and they help strengthen the muscles better. Um, so things like getting up and down from the chair. So typically thinking about when you're getting up and down from the chair and um, you're trying to put equal weight through both legs. OK, to make that slightly harder, I'm going to stand up. So you might see me go out of the camera just ever so slightly. Um, but I would get you to pop one foot in front of the other as you stand up and as you come down. OK, you might then think about slowly sitting up and sitting down with your bum slightly touching the chair or touching a low chair, performing what we call a squat. Um, and if you're if that's if that's something which you're recognizing is getting easier for you, then you want to try and strengthen that that leg, which is painful. So trying to do activities which involve the one leg, OK, and that might be a single leg knee bend, as you can see there on the right hand side. Um, other really important exercises, um, particularly to strengthen around the knee or not to neglect the calves and the muscles in the lower leg. And um, they have an important role for circulation um, as well as to support to the knee. And um, so doing a sort of calf raises exercise or doing heel raises behind the back of a chair or um, and progressing them when you can to trying to do those on one leg. Um, and exercises then you can see below um, are exercises which include bands and resistance machines. Now, I tend to hear a lot of um, a lot of people tell me that they're concerned about going to the gym or using resistance machines about causing further harm or causing further damage to the knee. Um, now, using resistance machines as long as you're sensible and you take it slowly and you get familiar with using that equipment are, can be really valuable uses and pieces of equipment to strengthen the muscles around the knees, as well as doing body weight exercises, um, which the exercises above are. Um, so another way of strengthening the muscles that you can consider. Um, now, at the end of this email, the, or at the end of this presentation, you'll um, see my email and I'll be able to forward you links to 
potential community activities that you might be able to attend, which are local to the Bracknell area. Um, and in this way, hopefully you'll be able to explore a little bit more around classes and, and other things that you can maybe try and get access to in the community, um, which will also be of significant benefit to help you strengthen the muscles and participating in um, more exercise. So what happens if I get pain when I'm exercising? Um, so I think it's important to, and this is a question that I get asked all of the time. So it's about using the traffic light system and thinking about a scale from zero to 10. Zero being no pain, 10 being the worst pain you ever had. And I tend to refer to, to 10 as being in the ambulance, okay? Um, so what where we wanna be aiming for pain on that scale is, is around about, so zero to two is about a green, three to four is about an amber, higher than a five is in the red zone, okay? Anything where you're wincing on your face, that's normally a little, that's normally too much, okay? Um, so aim to be within that three to four range. And, and it's not to, if you start experiencing pain early on in that activity or early on in that, uh, in that exercise that you're doing, don't think about abandoning that exercise. Think about how we might be able to potentially do it differently. Do you need to reduce the time period at which you're doing that for? Um, or do you need to give yourself a little bit more of a, uh, of a recovery period afterwards? Um, what I want to what I want to show is that and what I want to demonstrate is that pain does not mean more damage. OK, um, and it's important to listen to your body and then find the balance between rest and activity. Um, but exercising with some pain is not harmful, but I would always refer to um, using this traffic light system, as I've discussed. And the final thing around about exercise is that hopefully the, the pain should decrease 24 hours later after doing that exercise um, and should return to what your normal might be for you. Um, and like I said, if it doesn't, then think about how you might be able to do that exercise differently. Um, and um, thinking about other alternative forms of exercise also that might take the weight off the joint. So pacing and, and changing the way that you do activity. So listening to your body is vitally important. It's, it's OK to rest. OK, resting is important. If you've had a long day, your body will need time to recover. But it's vitally important that you get that right balance. Have regular breaks. If, if you're doing if you're doing lots of cleaning, then think about, OK, what standing related activities or what standing related jobs might be able to do in the morning and then break that up throughout the day. And then what standing jobs might I be able to do in an evening? Sometimes I refer to gardening um, and what thing, how can you change the way you garden in terms of um, reducing weight or pressure, which is putting put through your knee. So think about, again, maybe doing standing jobs in the afternoon or what things you might you be able to do sitting down, whether that's potting or weeding or um, other activities in the garden, planting vegetables, for example. These are things that you can do sitting in some in some instances. Divide the activity up into smaller parts um, and find other ways of doing the things that you have trouble with. And don't be afraid to ask for, for help from other people. All right. It's about, again, like I said, it comes back to listening to your body um, and as just doing what you feel as if you're able to do. So healthy eating and weight loss. So the heavier you are, naturally, the greater strain that you're going to take on the joint. So in other words, uh, a pound on the tum is four on the knee. And if you flip this on its head, in other words, if you were to lose just 10 pounds, you can relieve 40 pounds of pressure off your knee um, and that can have a significant impact on easing your pain. Um, fat itself contains um, contains inflammatory chemicals, which will increase the inflammatory levels inside the body. Um, and if you were to reduce your, your fat stores, then this can increase or decrease your overall level of inflammation inside your body and have a positive impact um, on your knee and potential in inflammation which is occurring inside the knee. And as we talked about before, eating healthily, losing weight um, can minimise your risk of other disease such as heart disease and diabetes. Um, the other things that I would make you sure you think about are sort of thinking positively about your condition. 
um, always trying to view that there is light at the end of the tunnel um, and there is always advice around the corner to try and help you manage it. So being mindful that stress has a quite close correlation with with pain um, and in some instances if you can get your stress under a little bit more control through potentially becoming more active then this can have a positive effect on your knee pain. Walking aids now I know the use of walking aids is um, is certainly sometimes a pride thing however they can be really beneficial in terms of taking pressure off the knee if it allows you to move more walk more and do a little bit more exercise then consider using um, consider using a walking stick or a walking aid footwear what i advise is using trainers okay try and avoid staying away from heels or thin soled shoes and um, medication medication can certainly help you to exercise and can help you get moving and perform your day to day activities. Um, but what I would advise is that if if you are struggling to manage your pain and you do want to try and get more active and you feel as if pain is limiting your ability to do that, then having a discussion with the doctor regarding medication will be important. And finally, braces. I get asked questions about braces all of the time. Braces are completely fine to use. OK, if braces allow you to become more active, um, and increase your confidence with exercising, then advocate the use of the brace. But you must be doing the muscle strengthening exercises around the knee as well. Now, what to do if it isn't helping uh, or all of the measures that you're trying to take to help yourself aren't helping? Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about these now. So physiotherapy. Um, so um, what physiotherapists can help you do is or what you should be going to or what you should be getting from your physiotherapy appointment is um, improving your understanding about osteoarthritis, which I hope we've done today. Um, advice on how to return to exercise. Um, a physiotherapist might be able to tailor and, and um, carry out an individualised programme for you, depending on your needs and, um, and your preconditioning level. Um, they might be able to refer you into an exercise class or advise you on classes in and around the community that you might be able to attend. Um, they'll also provide you with strategies in terms of helping manage swelling and help manage the pain. But also in, in understanding a little bit more how the body and mind can can also have an, a significant impact on pain. Now, injection therapy. So sometimes with injections, um, Injections can be used um, when there are significantly high levels and disabling levels of pain um, and particularly when there is swelling or there is warmth within the joint. OK, now injections, they aren't the be all and end all and they're not going to they're not normally a cure for the condition. Um, they normally provide around six to 12 weeks of benefit um, they will work for some. They'll work for others and they won't work for some people. Um, and what I would advise is that sometimes an injection works for longer because you because you change your activity and that's absolutely fine. OK, but there needs to be this reduced reliance on on injections because there is some evidence to suggest that repeated injections can cause further harm to the knee and can accelerate the risk um, of further harm or further damage to the cartilage. Um, but the, the, the advantage of it is that it is a significantly less invasive option than surgery. Um, now, surgical options. So, um, as I said to you before, um, surgery should be deemed as a last resort, but it certainly is something it is a viable option which can be considered. But it is something that I would ensure that you only sort of take uh, once you've explored all of your other options. Um, so the main sort of the main surgery which would be taking place is a total knee replacement. Um, so a knee arthroscopy or keyhole surgery is, is probably another surgery that you've heard quite commonly about. Um, but this is no longer recommended if you have osteoarthritis of the knee, um, but may be advocated in a sign where you can't fully straighten your knee or the knee is locked or something's getting caught with inside the knee. Um, but through having keyhole surgery in the presence of osteoarthritis or the presence of these age related changes can just accelerate the risk of um, of further changes in the future to the joint. The average life expectancy of a total knee replacement now is 20 to 25 years. We used to be told that it was 10 to 15. Um, 
but increased complications come again once we um if we're having further um or we're thinking about revision surgery 80 percent will have a positive result 10 percent will remain the same and 10 percent may get worse so it's really important to think about um, think about this as an option um, and they will not operate within six months after a steroid injection so another important thing to take into consideration because that will increase your risk of infection after the op um, potential complications after the surgery um, so one in every 20 people will suffer complications which is actually quite high and the complication rate can be as high as 23.6 percent um, with the main with the main complications being wound infection, blood clots, ongoing pain and stiffness, and in some instances mortality. About one in 50 cases would develop a wound infection after a total knee replacement. Most are treated with antibiotics, um, but if that doesn't work, then sometimes the leg has to be fused together and it means that you can no longer bend at the knee. And in extremely rare instances, the leg may have to be amputated. OK, and I advise you that this is very rare, but it's very important to be aware of these complications. Um, blood clots such as a DVT or thrombosis, OK, um, and factors which increase the risk of that happening are obesity, being overweight, smoking and generally living a sedentary lifestyle. And um, coming back to what we talked about before, the more that you can change these things, um, that, um, that will reduce your risk of blood clots. Um, ongoing pain and stiffness. So um, as we said before, 80 percent of people who have knee replacements um, will have a successful uh, will have a successful outcome. But there are 10 percent where symptoms will get worse and symptoms might not change at all. Um, and sometimes this isn't because of a technical fault of the operation um, and therefore cannot be fixed with a new operation. Um, and finally, um, about one in a thousand people um, may die after a total knee replacement um, with with links related to heart diseases being one of the main causes for that and that's normally due to the anaesthetic um, or the surgery itself so really do consider if it's definitely the option that you want to explore finally top tips um, so remember the concept wear and repair rather than wear and tear what can you do to try and make the knee more stable okay and improve the strength around the knee activity is key little and often all right we don't have to be defining everything as we do as exercise but how often do we get up and move how often do we go out and take short walks and um, how often do we do exercise or do activity in order to get ourselves out of breath and um, changing lifestyle i think that's vital and really important listen to your body is uh, like I said before, it's importance between rest and activity. Um, pain does not correlate with further harm or further damage. OK, I want you to be reassured about continuing to exercise despite having some pain. Have regular breaks and find a balance. And a knee replacement can be a successful operation, but it does have it does have its risks. Um, and I am happy to help. OK, this is a this is a small platform to talk about osteoarthritis. Um, so if you do have any other questions or, or if you want to ask me about community activities that were linked in the slides, um, then please just email me and I'm willing to answer any personal or individual questions about osteoarthritis of the knee. So there's my email address. And we'd love to get your feedback. So um, if you can uh, on your phones, if you can if you can scan this, I'm sure we're all used to to using uh, these QR codes now through COVID. So we'd love to hear a little bit more from you um, in terms of what we can do to improve and what things we can do to try and help in the future. So um, please give us a little bit more feedback and that would be great. Kieran, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I, we do have a few questions. Are you OK if I just fire away at you? Absolutely. Yeah. OK, so the first one is, are cartilage and meniscus the same thing? Uh, yes, yeah, so cartilage and meniscus are the same thing, but there are we have our cartilage inside the knee, which is the main shock absorber for our knee, and we want to do all we can to try and protect it. So they are they are the same thing. OK, 
Uh, and then the next question then, is there a specific diet you would recommend to help with managing arthritis and weight? Um, so I think that's a really good question. Um, the slides refer, if if there was anything that I would advise you to go um, or look in more into is the Eat Well, Help Well guide, um, which is um, which tells you a little bit more about what you should be consuming within your diet. Um, I'm not a big fan personally of diets which um, are these fast weight loss diets because I think the negative effect of that is that we, as well as losing fat, we also then lose a significant amount of muscle. Um, and it's muscles what we need in order to support the joint. So, but in further to that, you can always um, contact the doctor who might be able to put you forward with help from a dietitian, um, And they certainly might be able to provide you a little bit more uh, advice and top tips in terms of what you can do and what diet you should be adopting. But refer to the Eat Well, uh, Help Well guide. OK, thank you. And then the next one, how could I help control my pain to allow me to try the exercises you are suggesting? Um, so that's again, it's another really good question. So um, one way in order to help you to exercise um, might be consideration of, uh, of utilising a, a discussion with the doctor to discuss sort of low risk pain medication. OK, um, uh, with those being pet, normally paracetamol and ibuprofen, which are normally quite low risk drugs, but I would advise you to speak to your doctor. Now, there are, there are other strategies which you can do to try and help your pain in order to facilitate you to exercise. So um, sometimes the use of cold packs may help, but for other people, the use of warm packs may help. Um, and just getting the joint warm before exercising um, is something which can be also really beneficial. Um, so yeah, that would be a few top tips to try and help you with that. Thank you. And also to say, I've just posted the survey link in the question and answer function as well, so you can link straight to it if that's easier than using the QR code. One last question, Kieran. Um, is an arthroscopy shaving the cartilage? I had that done in the past and it helped, but my pain has returned. Uh, so yes, that's a, again, that's a really good question. Um, so an arthroscopy tends to be um, where they tend to repair the cartilage or they tend to take some of it away, depending on what the underlying problem was with it was within the joint already. Um, and Sometimes the reasons why the pain may help initially, but then tends to come back is because um, the, the cartilage is your main shock absorber for your knee. At that time, it might have been causing problems, but it then increases the risk of developing these age related changes inside the knee. So rather than viewing an arthroscopy um, as the next viable option, it actually can make, although it may help with the symptoms in the short term, it may actually mean that the pain may come back in the future. So it's never normally a long term solution for managing the problem. Um, and we need to be looking at taking more of these active approaches to to trying to manage the condition um, just like just like we discussed today. Great, cool. Well, that's that's all the questions, Kieran. So thank you very much. Um, and I'd just like to say a big thank you to Kieran for pulling these slides together. Um, what we'll do is we will have a recording of this session and we will put it on our website. Um, so the link that you received before um, to our website, it will be on that same page. Um, thank you all for attending and uh, stay safe. Bye now. Thank you, everyone.